gosh, I thought he was done. Of course he isn't going to be done. <laughs> yes, it is I, Dragon Gaming, keep on gaming. And what you can see on your screens right now, and if you've been with me for the past couple months, you understand why that big humongous run was there. And that's just kind of from a comedic intro, but... Oh, I think it's kind of comedic, but... Think about this. MatPat has made another bending theory, and he's already labeled it wrong. Okay, um, I need to write some of these since then, because I'd love to make tears. I'm going to rip this theory to shreds in a completely different video, but this video, I'm going to do it, you know, my way, because my way, okay? So, game theory. Bendy 2, Return to the Ink Machine. Bendy in the Dark Revival, which is right there. So we're actually going to look at it and see what's good about it. Bendy in the Dark Revival, huh? Sounds interesting. Oh, oh that hurt! Man, it's times like this that I wish I had an attack plunger. You're supposed to throw it at my hand! Your head's a bigger target. Oh, I will show you a bigger target. <laughs> okay, very good to see part. I'm going to take out the title soon. Stop the game, guys. Oh. I'm not sure if that was scripted or not, but that was so much favorite one Hello, so far. Internet. Welcome to Game Theory. Okay. So, I have a confession to make. I've underestimated the Bendy series. I honestly think uh, yeah. most of us have. So, what do I mean by that? Well, from a storytelling standpoint, these games are a lot more sophisticated than you might first believe. Take, for instance, my last episode on mm -hmm. the game, where we covered the design detail of characters who melt away being creatures who are made entirely of ink versus those whose bodies persist after being killed. Those are the ones that are infused with real human souls. I mean, it's an extremely subtle detail in the game design, and at no point does the game actually spell it out for you, but it's essential for understanding basically the entire plot of this game. Everything from how the ink machine works to the meaning of the ending. But for another great example, let's look at Sammy Lawrence, everyone's favorite music director slash cultist slash uh part-time hot topic social media manager. He has this dramatic death at the end of chapter two, so when he reappears at the top of chapter five, all of us were like, oh, what happened? Uh, cue the montage. Oh, okay. No! No way! Are you kidding me? Did Sammy like? Lawrence? Wait, oh, really? It's Sammy! It's Sammy I thought Lawrence. He died. Oh, we have to finally fight you? So, that's not Sammy, because Sammy died in chapter two, right? Gamers across YouTube were shooketh by this revelation. But if we were really. Uh, except for maybe Super Horror Bro, because after chapter two, he kept making theories as to why Sammy Lawrence could return. And when his gameplay of that came through, I'm ripping this thing to shreds and I'm not supposed to. I really need to write this one down. But Super Horror Bro went in and did the gameplay, and once that thing showed up, he's like, there you go, oh guys, another one of our theories, you know? It's like, that was one of our theories. And I'm like, everybody else was excited, and he'd come back, and he's like, he's gonna come back, he's gonna come back, I'm placing my money on it. And then he comes back, and... Not the way that it was supposed to, but... Paying attention. <laughs> I mean, really paying attention to the details, we would have known that Sammy had actually been reborn one other time between those two chapters. Across Bendy's five chapters, there's actually only two sorts of candle assets that are used. One, that are candles inside of cans of bacon soup, and the other ones are tall, white candles. Now, the bacon soup candles are used practically everywhere, but these white ones only tend to be used in places that are associated with music, remember Sammy Lawrence is the music director, yeah. or places where Sammy physically is. In chapter 2, for instance, they're around all the little prayer altars and sacrificial bowls that yeah. Sammy has set up for the ink demon. Again, in chapter 5, there were Sammy and the Lost Ones have set up their little memorial wall. But they're concentrated in one other random place throughout the game, specifically chapter 4's caves. At the top of chapter 4, there's an ink pool that we have to unlock that contains a respawning swollen searcher. You are supposed to rip off his little ink wart on his shoulder and then we move on. We use it to create create a gear, fix the, the little 
hangy, really dangly thingy. bits, and you move on to the rest of the game. It's a very simple puzzle. The pieces are right next to each other. It's not that complicated. But if we look closer at that moment, we'll actually notice more of Sammy's ritual candles set up around that inky pool, with Sammy's iconic mask hidden on the ground just behind it. Sammy hmm. was here, too, trying to summon something. The ink demon? We can't really know this for sure. Sammy Maybe he was successful, he which is why his the mask is the only thing left there. Now, out. I didn't find this out myself. This it was actually put together by Tumblr user Dreamfisher, who along with another Tumblr user, Adobe OutDesign, are the two most prolific bendy theorists on the internet, as far as I know, at least. Their work has gotten me to start taking a closer look at this game again, which is perfect, since there's actually a new game coming out later this year. More on that in a minute, but first, I wanted to talk a little bit about game design. It's interesting. Actually, as I've gone back through this game, I've really questioned why I missed some of these details the first time through. And the yes. reason is that the game design has a lot of noise. And I don't mean noise like, wow, I'm at a party and it's so loud and I need to shout in order for anyone to hear anything that I'm saying. I mean that there's just a lot of details in this world that feel extraneous, whether or not they actually are. Let's take a look at it from a numbers perspective. Noisy data is basically a set of numbers with a large amount of additional meaningless okay. information mixed. In. So, hit me with the numbers. Perfect. So, like here, right? You look at these data points, and you can tell pretty quickly just by looking right, at it fit. that it's supposed it to be in the shape of a line, right? This is what's known as clean data. But now, if you open this up here, I haven't used one of these since, like, science fair in high school. But now, if you look at this data, it's a lot less clear what this shape is meant to be. What's important in this data set? What isn't? Is there supposed to be a shape to define these data points at all? Probably not, quite honestly. All of this data is very noisy. Wow, the world of statistics is so exciting! So, now let's translate it to something that is legitimately exciting. Video games. And compare it to everyone's favorite franchise on this channel. Fair. Five Nights at Freddy. Oh, it invades even episodes that aren't about it. But there's a good reason in this case. Five Nights at Freddy's <laughs> is actually a great example of this concept. FNAF isn't a noisy game series. The first game is so stripped down, in fact, that the meaningful data points just stand out right for you. Golden Freddy, phone guy calls, weird newspapers on the wall. That's it. That's all you really need to solve the plot of this thing. In FNAF 2, yeah. There's a lot more going on, more rooms, more animatronics, more gameplay, but stuff like the mandatory death minigames force the meaningful data points directly into your face. You know mm -hmm. that they're important, even if you don't quite understand what they mean. It's up to you to figure out the line that connects those pieces. But in general, you know what data points you're working with. So now let's translate it over to Bendy. Now, I love Bendy as a game. I love its aesthetics. I love its characters. But it's a noisy game world. From a design standpoint alone, mm -hmm. the walls are covered in lots of different messages. The messages themselves repeat multiple times across the five different chapters. They all tend to have the same handwriting. So it's unclear whether they're supposed to be tracked to different writers or the same writer. There's mysterious footprints all over the floors, doors open and shut seemingly at random, and there's just a lot of stuff everywhere. It's a messy, yeah, right. ruined world, and that's okay, that's part of the atmosphere, but it just makes it unclear what's intentional world building, and what's just there to fill out the space. As a result, when I was crafting theories on Bendy, I tried to stay away from a lot of that messy data, and just focus on the things that are clearly important in any game that you play, quite honestly. The audio logs, character designs, dialogue, and things like like the and ending or the end chapter. chapter images but even those a lot of times in bendy would get changed when a new chapter released or when new updates would come out and it does seem like as the game's gone on more and more of it has gotten intentional which is always a good thing anyway the reason i bring all this up is because this game needs more theorists working on it there's still a lot to unpack here there's a lot of stuff to sift oh come on so Door open, there's a window on that. How about we split this True. up? Which is especially important because there's gonna be a new game. Bendy episodes. And the Dark Revival. Already there has been a lot of talk about So I will split this up into two episodes, one today, one tomorrow, whatnot, do all that crazy crap. And then what's gonna end up happening is basically from that end we're gonna go ha after that, I'm going to walk through this theory, write down everything that I need to, you know, destroy, and then make another video. 
So we're gonna split this up into two parts. This part being, you know, here it is. And that this game I playing into this new idea of choice based on this one line in the teaser. But one thing always remains the yeah. choices you make. And aside from that one line, that's really all we have to go off of. You could say that what's really going on here is Bendy and the shots in the dark. Terrible joke. Anyway, all that being yes. said, I actually think that we've been given more clues about this new game than we realize. So what is this new game about? And what is actually being minute, revived here? Minute, that, my video. friends is the That'd question for today. First, way. it's important to note that according to one of the game's creators, Mike Mood on Twitter, Bendy and the Dark Revival is not a sequel. Or There's a the prequel, right there, or Looking Bendy at the two. evidence square in your face. So. And yes, internet, I know that I put Bendy 2 in the title of this video, but guess what? Sometimes you gotta introduce people to a new game based on, you know, traditional titling conventions. I'm trying to prevent another Kingdom Hearts here, friends. We're not going to have ourselves Bendy's ink drop distance, okay? But Mike, in that same tweet, also makes it very clear that this new game isn't a prequel either. So if it's not a sequel, and it's not a prequel, well, that only leaves us with two other possibilities. Either it's an alternate universe that's using the same characters in a new way, or it's a side story. And based on the evidence that we have leading up to this new game's reveal, I actually think it's going to be a bit of both. Let me explain here. As we all know at this point, once you beat... There you go. That's the end of part one. Um, and I'm going to split this up into two parts because I have something else I'm trying to upload right now. Uh, not on this channel, but on something else. So, after that gets done, I'm going to make sure I free up some space off of that. Make sure I, you know, do all this with my jig. So, gives me time to really think this one through along with my other Bendy theory, which would be Bendy and the Dark Revival story has just been revealed to us. But that's a theory for another day. So, next time that you see me, I will most likely be covering part two of this and probably tearing this thing to shreds because that's what I do best. So, hope you guys did enjoy this video. Thank you for watching and stay beautiful. Bye!